I'm finally getting to a point where this design is nearly finished and ready for manufacture. So I thought I would just make this video about how it's laid out and how I've done things. Partly um, for myself in the future, if I ever come back to troubleshoot the board or modify it. It'll just remind me of how and why I've done things in certain ways. So the basic idea behind this is to have two separate boards. So this one here is like a daughter board to this the main board here. And that the reason behind that is that I quite like to have the wires coming in here from the read switches and buttons soldered permanently or in a more permanent way um, for reliability or vibration resistance. Um, and then this main board can then be removed from the bike much easier. So these header pins here, this row of header pins will connect up with this row here. And these holes will be for spacers to screw it together to provide mechanical connection. So there are actually tracks going across between these two boards. But the idea in use is that this will be cut here and then that board will sit on top of the other one that's connected mostly for so I can test it um, straight out the, out the box. Now this daughter board here is basically all power based stuff um, and obviously transferring signal across to the main board. So on the, the, the top here we have the input from the dynamo and the rectifier and then this area here is basically two power latch circuits now this one is not actually being used for power latch it's just being used as a switch and that's controlled from this pin here on the arduino and that just prevents the battery from being overcharged and then this is the power latch circuit and that's controlled so it's switched on by the cadence read switch which comes in there and then it's held on by the Arduino which comes in there on A3. Um, I've got two battery connections and the reason for that is that I like to have a physical mechanical switch which I can isolate the battery and it's going to be two pole. Now if you have just one connection means you'd have to choose between having the dynamo connected either permanently to the circuit board or permanently to the battery and neither of those are the best option and down here we have this is just a voltage regulator and that provides 3.3 volts for the front and rear light now some of these connections here are just passing straight through on the main board and others are signals coming back from the board to switch. Um, and so the idea is that this board can be either mounted sticking out the side here, or you could tuck it underneath the main board here as well, um, for two different options to make it more compact. I think that explains basically what all the this board is and these are all grounds because the switches are all you know they can pull up and then when the switch makes it falls to ground um let's move on to so the main board so we have power comes in here from the battery that's battery voltage and that's fed to the arduino and also to a regulator up here now the reason for that regulator is that uh, this is going to be compatible with either a typical nano or a nano BLE. Now the BLE doesn't seem to be able to provide sufficient 3.3 volts to power this uh, NRF24 L01 module and so I've provided this separate regulator here. Now that also can be configured using this jumper here to provide 5 volts as well. So this is going to be a Bluetooth module connected out here. And so I can also provide 5 volts for that if, if needed. Um, now these regulators, I've put capacitors on them 
just for stability and also Capacitor is quite good with these wireless modules because they're quite spiky in their power demand. There's a bit of debate online as to what the best capacitors were but uh, I chose in the end uh, Tantalum and 100 microfarad just because they were available as a basic part. Um, so I fitted those near to the wireless modules and also on the output of the regulators. Um, so that explains the power side of it. Obviously you've got um, 5 volts or 3.3 volts that provides power. Also can provide power. Um, and you've got 3.3 .3 down here. So that's various options for power um, supply on the board. Um, here we have on all the button or read switch inputs we have LEDs which is something I've learned from a previous job. It's always very good for troubleshooting if you have an LED so that can tell you whether the switch is actually operating or not. Um, I've provided some protection because I'm using potentially going to be using in the future the more expensive nano BLE. Um, I've provided some sort of protection, which I'm not sure if this is really necessary. Um, transient voltage suppressors. So they're going to clamp the voltage to around 6.3 volts in the case of static. Um, but they're really necessary, I don't know, but I thought I'd include them, especially for things like buttons, maybe potential for static. And also for pin protection, I've got these are 330 ohm resistors. Now the idea behind that is that if for any reason a pin gets configured as an output and then written high, if the read switch was then to close it would short circuit that pin. So that just provides some protection. Um, we've got various jumpers on the board here which can either be solder or uh, solder and header pins so they can be removable. Now this one here is a pull up to keep the power latch circuit on. So if, for example, the Arduino fails, I can still power the front and rear light. So I've got a jumper down here that will pull up the MOSFET, which is here, to switch the light on. And I've also got a button here. So that basically functions just as the rear light used to um, in its original form. You just press the button to cycle through the modes. Um, we have also got, which is a feature that became necessary, an external EEPROM when I switched to the BLE because that doesn't have an EEPROM on the actual, on the chip. Um, you can store stuff in the actual memory, but if I'm going to be switching between different nanos, it's nice to have certain um, parameters, shifting parameters, and things like the bike's total mileage um, actually stored on this circuit board because this circuit board will belong to the bike. So certain things will be stored on that. Um, so I've tried to choose fairly standard values to keep parts as basic. So resistors, for example, um, these are the I squared C pull up resistors, they're 5.6k instead of 10, um, just because I'm using 5.6 on some of these resistors here. Try and minimize the parts list if possible. Um, and yeah, I think of um, things like the um, ground plane, if I switch to the um, the underneath uh, copper layer. Trying to think about um, routes for grounds, for example. Now, this is something I've stolen from Arduino: is to mark the grounds with a white rectangle. You'll notice those on newer boards. Um, but just trying to think about the route to which the ground is going to take. Um, in some places, I've had to add extra veers, um, and also power tracks, for example, keeping them thicker. And I've also added three veers there just to, to make sure I've got a good connection. Not that there's really significant uh, current through some of those power tracks, but uh, just to be you know, on the safe side. Um, 
You'll also notice that I've added extra extensions on these pads. Now that can enable a um, more up-to-date Arduino, which has the castellated edges. I think that's what they're called. Um, they can be soldered directly flat down onto the circuit board. Um, but I think I'll use header pins because I like it to be removable, but it's an option for the future. And I've also added them here as well, both on the top and bottom side, so that I can add bodge wires across if necessary, if I decide to change pins, for example. Um, I've also added lots of labeling, make it easier to connect stuff up. Um, let's have a look at the uh, 3D view just to finish. And um, this is it without the components on. You can the components back on. I'm going to have it done in black because that matches the bike. Um, and yeah, let's have a look at the back. I see just labeling. Um, yeah, I think that pretty much explains everything I can think of at the moment. And loads of thought has gone into the positioning of stuff and track routing. You know, making sure that it's uh, direct routes. Um, try to minimize the number of vias if possible. Um, and yeah, I think that pretty much summarizes everything. And uh, thank you for watching.